There are a great number of things that go into college applications, but what really matters? What is worth putting extra time into? Hi, I'm Sawyer Earwood. And I'm Jess Chermack. And this is what admission officers are looking for in your college application. The most important piece of the college application process is demonstrating your intellectual capacities through academic rigor to prove that you're college ready. So how do admissions counselors make this determination? College admission officers will often talk about GPA and test scores, but there's a lot of other factors that impact how colleges view your academic achievements. We're going to cover both the basics and the more nuanced information about how colleges view your academics and what you might be able to do to set yourself up for success. GPA is an important factor in college admissions. It gives the application reader a sense of how rigorous your course load was and how well you performed in class. It's common for a GPA to be on a 4.0 scale. However, some curriculum such as AP, IB, dual enrollment, honors courses, or advanced courses may give your GPA a boost beyond the traditional 4.0 scale. You should take the most advanced courses your school has to offer, provided that you can do well in them. Remember, it's always better to have an A in physics than a D in AP physics. Most conversations about transcripts in the GPA stop at course rigor in the 4.0 scale. However, something that is not discussed enough is the trend of your academic progress over your high school career. There's a few ways to look at these trends, but two are most significant. Number one, looking at grade trend by year. This means that they are looking at your GPA each semester for all of your semesters to get a more holistic view of your academic endeavors. This is why so many people say that doing well in ninth grade is crucial to an exceptional college application. Admission officers want to see a high but stable grade trend or an upward grade trend. Both of these trends reveal a student's long-term commitment towards success in their education. On the opposite side of the spectrum is a consistently low grade trend or a downward grade trend. This is why many people warn seniors about senioritis, especially after they have completed their college applications. Be aware that admission officers are still looking. The most complicated trend, though, involves a dip and then a rally. We often see this when a student experiences a challenge that impacts their performance in class. The most common involves downward trend earlier in high school, followed by an upward trend to finish strongly. It is very important to understand your grade trend and how it might be interpreted. Number two, grade trends by subject. As the name implies, this lens focuses on specific academic subjects and your mastery of said subjects. This is important because there are many areas of study that require more in-depth preparation. For example, if you're applying to engineering programs, the admission officers will expect you to do have taken and done well in a robust selection of STEM courses. Conversely, if you're intending to major in art history, your science and math courses will not carry as much weight in the process. Standardized test scores, which have traditionally been a major factor in the college admissions process, may not hold as much weight as they have in previous years. As you've probably heard and possibly experienced, many SAT and ACTs have been canceled due to COVID-19. As a result, many colleges have elected to go test optional or test blind. Test optional implies that a student can submit an application without test scores and be viewed holistically. One concern with how schools are implementing test optional policies is that there will be many students who are able to submit scores, and it's unclear how admission officers will utilize them, or lack thereof, in the decision-making process. On the other hand, test-blind admissions implies that a school will no longer consider test scores for any applicants. Overall, if you have some less than stellar spots in your application but are also a good test taker, it might be wise to seek out an opportunity to take the exam. If you're confident in the rest of your application and are not the best test taker, we're advising students not to stress about it, at least for this application cycle, likely for the next year or two. Grades and scores are both important, but your activities list and writing helps an admission officer to connect with you as a person rather than as a number. These qualitative parts of the application give you an opportunity to display your intellectual curiosity, personality, and character in meaningful and thoughtful ways. One piece of the application where you can do this is the activities list, which is basically a resume. This list is important because the admission officer really wants to see what you've taken time to get involved in, um, that whole self-exploration piece. It's particularly important to participate in things that you're actually passionate about and or help you to grow as a person, not because you think it will look good for your college applications. Admission officers are professionals and the difference between an activity to fill space and an activity you're passionate about is night and day to them. There are many ways to engage in activities, including paid work experience, volunteering, hobbies, youth group. 
Oftentimes students get stuck in the mindset that activities lists can only consist of experiences directly relating to high school participation, but don't limit yourself. What's far more engaging to read about is what you've done outside of school. Work experience is valuable because it teaches you some sort of skill, some work ethic, and it also shows a great deal of responsibility and reliability. Just think outside the box and don't be afraid to explore what activities you have to offer. Do you take a martial art, work a part-time job, or take care of your younger siblings? These are all valuable activities that speak to you as a person, and they need to be in your activities list. When I was in admissions, given the choice between quality of activities and quantity of activities, I would always prefer the quality of activities. Find things that you are passionate about, become engaged with them, and stick with them. Showing long-term commitment to a meaningful activity speaks volumes about your character and what you might bring to a college campus. Don't just participate in activities to help lengthen your list or because you think it is what an admission officer wants to see. And also, don't be afraid to create your own activities. Something to consider when you start to build your resume toward the beginning of your high school experience is recording the time spent in each activity and how often you engage. Keeping a log like this will help when you need to talk about the amount of time you've given to an activity. A log can also act as a journal to reflect on what you've done while the memory is still fresh. While your activities list highlights your interests and possibly some skill sets, the essay and short answer portions of your application are an opportunity to show your personality and give the admission officer a glimpse of who you are. Uh, choose a subject that you know a lot about, something that's meaningful and enjoyable to write. Be authentic and genuine. Admission officers are looking for signs of maturity, personal growth, independence, insight, self-reflection, values, writing skills, your thought process, and your personality. Avoid bragging, sob stories, and reiterating your resume and activities list. And don't forget to have one or two reliable parties to look at the essay before submission to ensure grammar and punctuation is up to snuff. When all the different parts of the application are combined, an admissions officer should have a good idea about who the student is as an academic, a future professional, and possible community member. There are a few questions that most admission professionals will consider to ultimately make their decision. Question number one, will the student academically succeed at their institution? This is the foundation of almost every admission decision. Admitting a student that won't succeed does not benefit the student, the family, or the institution. For better or worse, the world of higher education is dominated by rankings. The importance of these rankings means that when students drop out or take longer than four years to graduate, the reputation of the school ultimately suffers. There are very few things more important to colleges and universities in this country than their reputations. The second question, what will the student bring to campus? Let me present two theoretical students. Student A has a perfect GPA and SAT, but no desire for any extracurricular involvement, while student B has a middling GPA and SAT, but they have demonstrated significant extracurricular achievement and have shown intentions to continue their involvement on campus. While student A is likely to be admitted, I would advocate for student B every time. You are investing in your education by attending a college and they are investing in you to bring something meaningful to their community. Admissions officers want you to start a club, create a new research project, discover a one-of-a-kind internship, or any other significant involvement in the community. Question three, will a student actually attend the institution? This question is a question more commonly asked at highly selective institutions or during significant scholarship competitions. If a college is planning on investing time and resources into a student, then they want to know the student is actually interested in attending. Likewise, if a school has a very limited number of slots to accept students, they want to make sure that those accepted will likely attend. The easiest way you can build a profile that conveys the intention of enrollment is by building a respectable list of events demonstrating interest in an institution. Question number four. What will this student accomplish long term? We've mentioned the term investing a few times during this discussion. Most admission officers view their applications as potential long term investments for their institution. Will an acceptance student succeed in some notable way? Fame, profession, academics, wealth? Each student that graduates an institution becomes a possible source of marketing and fundraising. An application should convey or support the idea that a student has a drive to succeed after graduation. Many students don't realize that the review of your application does not occur within a vacuum. While the content of your application will play a huge role in determining your admission decision, there are several factors that will be considered outside of what you submit. The same way that you should think of your audience when you write an essay, you also need to think of the schools on your list as an audience for your application. Every institution is a living, breathing entity that has its own circumstances and goals to consider. Shifting the frame of your application from solely your submission to a larger context provides more information to make your application competitive. 
Demonstrate an interest is one of the topics that exists somewhere between your application and the institutional priorities. Uh, it's important to note that each institution values and tracks demonstrated interests differently. At the same time, showing interest in the schools you're applying to will never hurt your application. Demonstrated interest is also unique in that it begins to accumulate well before your application or senior year. Visiting schools, attending college fairs, completing inquiry cards, and engaging with college communications are only a handful of ways to demonstrate interest starting as early as ninth grade. A general rule to follow is that a college can see or track any interaction you've had with them, in person or digitally. Demonstrated interest might not make or break your application, but it can be a meaningful metric. If two equal students cross an admission officer's desk, one displaying demonstrated interest, the other not, they will always support the one showing interest. Similarly, the more your admission officer knows about you and your interests, the more likely they are to advocate for you and have you on the radar for potential academic or financial opportunities. Moving even further away from your application, most schools have their own set of institutional priorities. These priorities can vary greatly from year to year and can often inform how they view applicants or build an applicant funnel. To go through every possible institutional priority would be both impossible and impractical, but there are some straightforward examples to help explain the idea. For example, every college and university loves to claim they have students from all 50 states and multiple countries. If a college is missing a student from a state, that might act as a benefit for you throughout the admissions process. Similarly, if a college is in need of a flute player and you fit the bill, that could help you through the process as well. Generally speaking, the more selective the institution, the more impactful these institutional priorities will be. Your insight into institutional priorities might be limited, as much of this is discussed behind closed doors, but it is always something to be aware of. We've talked about a lot today. Ultimately, what we really want to convey is that the application process is not monolithic. The application itself is made of several parts, and each part is viewed through a different lens and carries varying levels of importance. And while the application gets the spotlight, things like demonstrated interest, institutional priorities, and perceived long-term investment can play an equally important role. At the end of the day, your application needs to be authentic. Your application needs to clearly display your personality, your values, ambitions to someone who might be a complete stranger. You are painting a portrait of yourself, which will ultimately inform an admission officer or committee of your fit for their institution. Be thorough, be transparent, and most importantly, be yourself. If you have any more questions about college admissions, From Nest to Wings is doing a week-long series all about college admissions. Click there to see yesterday's video, consider subscribing to get all the new videos, and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.